welcome back all of you boys and girls. You are watching once again the Pro Gaming Series 2016 Summer Split. It is day two, a Saturday this weekend right now here in this very prestigious esports tournament. And with you today is going to be... Neep. <laughs> Neep. Yeah. And Aika. So... Yeah, and now we are looking at the second matchup. So coming from a very explosive matchup between Acclaim Empire X and War Gods La Liga Pilipinas, we move smoothly right into this next one. It is going to be between Mineski and Cerberus. So yes, let us look right now into the drafting phase. Of course, before that, let us get into our hype mode because we have a lot of energy coming in because of Bacchus Energy Drink. Drive your energy and get excited because we are now picking and banning. And I mean, this match is going to be extremely exciting. Uh, Mineski just came off of a zero yeah. last week against AEX. And Cerberus, they've been looking really solid. I believe they went 1-1 last week. I can't recall what team. However, Cerberus is looking really good so far. The team from relegations already at the top of this PGS ladder. And let's head into the pick and ban right now as we take a look at that first pick. Uh, Kindred for Hamiz right there. Meanwhile, we uh -huh. do see Cerberus are hovering over that Lucian and Malzahar. And Malzahar has been toned down quite a bit in this 6.10 patch. So yes. I doubt they play him, but it looks like that will indeed be the case as Rek'Sai being hovered over for Trevor. And Rek'Sai has been seeing a lot of popularity so far. I mean, in the LCK right now, I believe Rek'Sai has a 40% yeah. pick rate into the LCK, so that's really high. But unfortunately, no Rek'Sai for today as we will be seeing the Lease for Trevor and the Lucian for Marky. So Marky not going on is Caitlyn. We've seen Marky play a lot of Caitlyn recently. Yes. However, this time around, he's opting to take that Lucian very, very early into the rotation. And let's see what Mineski picks. Uh, Mineski, let's see what they do have open. We do have that Lulu open, TG and you may both like that Lulu quite a bit. They might possibly play the Lulu. And this might complement really well with uh, Vayne. I believe a lot of uh -huh. the Mineski players have been playing oh. a lot of Vayne. However, Alistar and Twisted Faith for Mineski. Yeah, and we know how you, how good you may is in the, on that Twisted Yeah, and I mean, well, from personal experience, I was playing against Mineski the other day. And you may just destroyed us with his Twisted Faith. Twisted Faith. So I'm excited to see his Twisted Ooh. Faith again. And we do see Chalk on the Varus once again. I mean, he's played a lot of Varus in the past, uh -huh. and he's no stranger to this champion. And the Varus versus Twisted Faith match is fairly interesting. I think Chalk should be able to handle this thing quite decently. I'm surprised they didn't pick up the Malzahar, though. I mean, despite those nerfs, the Malzahar Varus combo is something that they've. Yeah, however. Yeah. I feel like Elise can also fill that niche oh. quite well. You just go for that Flash Cocoon. Uh, uh -huh. It's not as strong as the suppression from Malzahar, but I think it can work pretty well. And you still have the other benefits that Elise has, including her really strong early game presence, uh -huh. the really fast clear speeds compared to Malzahar. And Mineski hovering over the LeBlanc, which is definitely not going to be a LeBlanc. <laughs> unless they play uh, like yeah. a LeBlanc no, top or something. Huh. Yeah, we're just waiting for these picks to go down. <laughs> Will Zentro <laughs> He's go just on the... He's yawning into the camera. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're looking pretty relaxed so far, this Cerberus team right now. Yeah. Looks like Mineski might take that Caitlyn yes. for themselves. So Caitlyn and Lulu for Mineski. So that will be oh, the... No. Oh, no. Sivir and Lulu. So most likely the Lulu for a TG. And let's see what Cerberus does in response. The, the Sandra pick, the Swain pick. I actually really like the Swain as Swain got quite a lot of buffs in the 6.10 patch. Uh -huh. His healing yeah, is now did. flat and his sustain is just really ridiculous and that Swain is locked in. So the Swain for Yukes and I'm excited to see the Swain as we haven't seen Swain in a really long time and now there's a <laughs> chance where he's finally well, viable. Well, yeah, he's finally viable again with 6.10. We have some interesting picks here for the side of Cerberus. Um, they have that sway, and they have that Varus mid. And meanwhile, for the side of Mineski, they have Lulu for TG. Hopefully, he will do a better job on that Lulu compared to what they tried to run with a Lulu from yeah. last week. 
it's gonna be pretty interesting. I mean, Swain actually hurts quite a bit in lane once you land the E, followed by the Q that actually does a decent amount of damage. And I'm pretty interested to see how this matchup will work out for this top lane. But I feel like the main story is gonna be in this bot lane, especially and in this jungle. In regards to the bot lane, uh, Mineski has a very aggressive place I mean Zentro and Noel they go ham on in that bot lane we've okay. seen them go time and time again but, but looks like hold on in the top lane for Mineski we will have TG and for the side of CRB will be Yux meanwhile in the jungle we have James and for Mineski and for CRB will be Trevor and for that mid lane we will be having Yume making a return once again versus Chalk so last week excellent play in that mid and for that AD carry position we have Zentro versus Marky. And lastly, but definitely not the least, for the support role, we have Noel versus Shadow. And I mean, both of these teams are fairly established. Mineski, they've been around yeah. for a really long time. And, and Cerberus, Cerberus, it's a new name. It's but like it's a, a mix it's like of two prominent Even teams though from. it's like a new name, how the players are really old. They've yeah. been around for a really long time. In fact, I'm, there's a running joke where it's like, Manila Eagles 2.0 as Hughes, Trevor, Chalk, Marky. Yeah. We're all on Manila Eagles at yeah. one point. So these guys have been around for a while. That rivalry between Neski and uh -huh. these players has definitely been around as well. And I'm really excited to see. This is very crucial for Neski as Neski, they're not in the position they want to be at yeah. right now. They're actually struggling so far. I believe this is probably one of their worst regular Start. splits. Yeah, worst yeah. starts. So, so far in PGS history. Meanwhile, Cerberus, they're a new team. And oh. I believe Shadow is um, coming in now that Mikos is stepping out. I mean, we haven't seen Mikos play quite a bit. I think he did play in the very first week of the PGS. However, other than that, it's been mainly Shadow. Yeah. So he might be uh, become a mainstay for the composition here for Cerberus. So that will be so far, um, Lulu, Kindred, Twisted yeah. Faith, and the Severe Pool. So, although I'm surprised, usually because usually when teams pick up Kindred, um, you face off with a Graves, and I kind of see the why they would go for at least instead, since it uh, favors their team comp much better. Yeah. For Cerberus. Well. So. What do you think uh, is going to be the win condition for Cerberus here with that kind of composition? I definitely feel like they just need to maintain their composure. They have fairly good ways to poke and pick an enemy team. They have that Swain. Swain's uh -huh. a really tanky frontline. Like, he does a lot of damage and he's just really tanky when it comes to those team fights. At least he's going to start hurting quite a bit. At least has a lot of damage. And the... Uh, Barris as well has a decent amount of damage, so they just want to scale towards that mid game. Once they come to the mid game, they have this slight advantage in that mid game uh -huh. position with the Lucian going for his Black Weaver, Yomu's Ghost Blade build, and the Barris, of course, with uh -huh. the damage. And I'm actually curious to see if this Barris will be going for the traditional uh, Tear of the Goddess blue build sort of <laughs> build, or will he be going for the new Barris build that we've been seeing where they just build a lot of attack speed, they get that yeah. Gensu's, they get that Hurricane. And they just use the poke as a secondary. They just apply as many stacks as they can, and then they use the damage from the W to just serve as that extra damage. Yeah. Although I'm also quite um, interested in seeing how Mineski is going to be pulling off their team fights here because they are running a double teleport composition with that Twisted yeah, Fate Destiny. I've actually seen this in play before. Mineski is yeah. really going to focus around. Yeah the top I feel like I'm just really gonna focus around the top lane using Yume's uh destiny. destiny using the double teleport and just capitalizing on that just playing all around the map and going for yeah. those 4v0 3v0 tower dives as they do have that kindred kindred is really good for, for these the, tower dives yeah, yeah exactly with lamb's respite and we all know as well that this is a composition that Mineski is quite comfortable with they've run this several times the double teleport with the destiny so this may be their comeback week in the pro gaming series um, summer split so far. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how this pans out. Will Mineski make that comeback or will Cerberus show their dominance? Well, we won't know until we head onto the rift. So guys, what is your bet between this second matchup for the day here in week four, day two of the pro gaming series? Are you for Mineski? 
Um, write down your thoughts with a hashtag Mineski win. Are you for Cerberus? Write that down with uh, CRB win. Hashtag CRB win. Hashtag MSKI win. And of course, don't forget to mention what exactly it is you're talking about. This is the PGS 2016 summer split. So the hashtag for that will be PGS 2016. So feel free to argue. No, no, actually just discuss in a friendly manner in the chats whether you are for the blue side or the red side and what your predictions will be. And of course, we wouldn't have all of this um, hype right now in this uh, third game if it's not for Bacchus Energy Drink, Drive Your Energy. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's head right back into the Summoner's Rift for the side of Mineski, we have TG on that Lulu top lane, Hamez on the Kindred Jungle, Yume on the Twisted Fate mid lane, running a teleport, Zensho on the Sivir ADC, and Noel with that Ignite Alistar support. And for the red side, we have Cerberus Esports. For that top lane, we have Bukes on the Swain. In the jungle, we will be having Trevor on that at least for the mid lane, Chalk on that Varus, and for that bottom lane duo, Lucian and Shadow. Lucian and Janna being played by Marky and Shadow. All right, so Mineski here marching in as a group to lay down some deep wards. They have already been spotted out by that ward earlier from CRB. So they'll, have just, they'll just head right back yeah, into their own jungle. We do see a good response coming in from the Cerberus side, putting the wards on the opposite side of the map and just trying to get even for this early game vision advantage. Yes, so... Huh. So far, though, yes. we do see Mineski pinging for um, that Grom. Yeah, it looks just like just to signal where the enemy will start. Yeah, it looks like we will be seeing Marky and Shadow going for that Grom. Meanwhile, Zentro and Noel will be just going for that leash and going yeah. to lane. So, let's see if Cerberus is able to capitalize on this level two advantage. Most likely, going to be going to Marky, so he does have that dash and the piercing light available to. Poke out Zentro in this yeah. bottom lane. And this is actually one of the bigger weaknesses of this Mineski comp as uh -huh. Zentro tends to go very aggressive like we saw in their game against Imperium Pro Team. They went for the... I, I still rec remember this moment when they went <laughs> for that really deep tower dive uh -huh. and Hate just managed to live yeah. underneath turret. So the Mineski bot lane, very aggressive. And so Sivir isn't exactly the type of... Um, yeah. Well, Sivir <laughs> is a bully in lane. I mean, those she is, ricochets... She is. Those ricochet... Um, yeah. Attacks hurt quite yeah. a bit. You just farm the creeps at the same time you're harassing the enemy team. So there. And we see here Yooks just heading back as well after laying down some deep wards for himself. Yeah, and I'm really interested to see how these junglers plan their routes as Trevor and Thomas are both very talented junglers and both teams are pretty dependent on them establishing tempo for the team. I feel like the meta actually itself is very jungler reliant as yeah. the jungler just defines the game so much. He sets the tempo for the team and how they play the map as there's so many objectives right now on this map. So yeah. the jungler, they just have so many responsibilities to keep track of and enable for your team. And usually games are decided on based on which team has the objective advantage, especially when it comes to those elemental drakes. Yeah, More or less, it is going to be the team who has the most drakes that tends to win. Yeah, let's see what happens. We already see damage going down onto Zenstro and it looks like Mineski is going to be playing this ball in a lot more safer. So. so interesting thing to note there, Yume actually has an 85% kill participation, 4.1 KDA and a 489 GPF. And Those are some insane stats. That really complements this Twisted Faith. I mean, as a Twisted Faith, their goal is to put pressure on the map with the Destiny and yeah. having the 85% uh, kill participation is a reflection of that really high play with Twisted Faith. Yeah. And Yuke's also 73% as well. So that's actually very high for a top laner. And I guess that goes to show how well Yuke's has been in those teleports. Like his teleports, this split has been really on point. Yeah. Where they always he's able seem to create things for his team. Yeah. Into kills. And let's see if Yuke's is able to make use of this teleport as he's definitely going to need to with the double TP and Destiny presence from the Mineski team. And All right. so far, I mean. It's looking fairly standard so far. We do see Trevor going for that gank in the mid lane. So just putting some pressure down. 
in that mid. Meanwhile, Hame is going for a very uh, safe and clear route. I'm really interested to see where he prioritizes, if he's going to prioritize this top lane or if he's going to prioritize the bot or mid lane, for example. But I have a very strong feeling that he's going to be... Con I feel like he's just going to farm up for the majority <laughs> of the early game. Yeah, then once and when it those comes, fights break yeah, out. Then once uh, Yume hits 6, that's when he'll start doing his thing and just start working with Yume and possibly Noel to roam towards the top lane yeah. and probably take an objective there as they have the Sivir. So Sivir is a really safe... AD That's carry. That's true. So that and she lends Noelle a lot to her team. Yeah. So Noel is free to roam and do whatever he wants. And as. make those plays with his Alistar. We know, of course, how good of a playmaker he is on that champion. Meanwhile, let's look at Zensho with the 56% kill participation and a 3.5 KDA on top of a 400 yeah. and GPM. It's, that's a pretty high gold per minute average. And it just goes to show how... They tend to prioritize this top lane, they tend to prioritize the mid lane, while Zencho is usually just there to just farm the lanes farm. up and just 1v1 yeah. the enemy AD carry, relying on his mechanical prowess to do so. Okay, so not much going on just yet. We had a lot of um, pauses there. Hopefully the excitement starts to build up real soon. Yeah. It is an Elise, so Elise is a pretty strong <laughs> early game jungler. I'm expecting Elise to do some stuff once he picks up that blue buff. Possibly go mid, possibly bottom. We'll see what she decides to do. And that is a, a Mountain Drake on the map right now, which is fairly important for both of these teams. One of the more important objectives, one of the more important dragons to take so far in this mm -hmm. 6.10 meta. Yeah, because it's like you get an objective that helps you get more objectives. That doesn't go away. Meanwhile, a gank oh, in that mid lane the, chalk. Yes, in the mid lane chalk is getting quite low. He flashes and manages to live through that one. Hamas will have to back off for now, but does send the enemy mid laner back and home. And that was Not a, quite a really good advantage for Mineski right there. They burnt the cleanse, they burnt the flash from chalk. They also burnt the flash from Trevor and the uh -huh. teleport from Yuki. So within four minutes, they managed to burn four summoner spells from this server side, which is huge. Yeah. Meanwhile, Ham has only burnt his flash. Actually, you may burnt his flash a while ago in lane. And that's pretty important for this um, Vanessa team. That's what they need so far. Yeah. So we're looking at the stats of TG. He has 57% kill participation, 3.0 KDA, and a 361 GPM in that top lane for Mineski. Yeah, I mean, TG. He's been in the top lane for quite a while. Very reliable top laner. And he does have his moments where he just completely stomps on the enemy top laner. However, Yukes, he's had his moments so far this split. He's been playing very well this split and shown a wide variety of champions. And just like we said earlier, really great teleports uh -huh. and just really good team fighting overall. And Nesky oh, going in. Yes, we have there onto Marky a lot of aggression from the side of Nesky. And now Marky is getting really low he has to back off or else this could be first blood it looks like it will not be as both teams just decide to back away and proceed back to farm you see a serious advantage already being built up for the mineski side 44 to 37 bot lane meanwhile 37 to 31 in that top lane and we did see if yume was forced to recall pretty early uh -huh. same with chalk chalk actually went for the tier of the goddess so he will be looking to stack that up, get those stacks, and just deal a lot of damage with that Mura mana. And I mean... <laughs> All right. Those players... So, so far though... They're looking um, really focused. It Jeez. doesn't look like Trevor has come back for another um, aggressive play. Yeah, so far he hasn't been doing that much counter yeah. jungling either, just farming yeah, very Yeah, actually, despite how you nor normally the way you play Annalise is you just gank and turret die for days. Yeah, however, it's nice to be able to choose the smart ganks as there's not really that many places to gank so far. He doesn't have his flash available. Bald lane is pretty safe. They have that Alistar, they have the Sivir, which are pretty good at escaping from ganks. I mean, you've got that yeah. stealth field and Alistar's got insane peel. So Trevor just looking to farm up and wait for the magic to happen. We know we did see Hamas go for a lot of deep wards into that enemy jungle, so he will be able to spot out control. Oh, and here goes the ult. Yes, we have the ultimate onto Yume here, as well as Cocoon landing in the mid lane, and first blood goes to Chalk. 
with a little help, of course, from Trevor. And Trevor's patience finally paying off there <laughs> as he manages to secure yeah. that first blood onto Yumei, knowing that Yumei didn't have the splash available. And Noel, once again, <laughs> just being a bully with that headbutt. He really likes guy, doing that. Yeah, the guy, of course, Trevor, I mean, has 73% KP, 4.0 KDA, and 317 GPM. Yeah. So the beauty of the composition of CRB shining quite well for that first blood take. And again, we see Cerberus. They really like to do this. They, When it comes to their vision control, they tend to split the map in half, prioritizing their warding on the river rather than going for those very deep wards, as we do see that the entire river so far is just covered with those wards. We see everything. So far, oh, that yes, top in the top lane, lane TG looks like he's going to fall really fast, uses wild growth to stay alive just a little bit longer, though these two from CRP are not going to quit on him, and they get... Another kill that's two kills so far for Cerberus eight minutes into this game. And that's kind of my problem with the warding coming in from Ham is while it's nice that you have those deep wards in the enemy jungle, you don't establish uh, vision in the part that's contested. The river in the early game is probably the most important part to ward yeah. rather than going for those very deep wards. And because of that, um, Mineski had no idea that Trevor was making his way towards this top lane and that was an easy gank for Pepper. Meanwhile, look at the w vision that CRB has laid down around that river area. They have those in around Baron. They have a few yeah, and close to the Drake. So Take a look at the items actually coming in from both Marky and Shadow. Both of them have pink wards of their own. So every single member of Cerberus has bought a pink ward so far. And they're all going to place <laughs> it on the map. Yeah. And that's just really smart that play coming in from Cerberus. Going for that vision control in that early game. That they need to establish the vision control for them to snowball as that's an Elise and you want to just apply that pressure with your Elise. I mean, the pink wards are a lot more valuable than those regular Sightstone Trinkets as not only do they provide vision, they also deny vision as yeah. well. And meanwhile, we do see some warding coming in from Hamez as well. And Mineski stra starting to react to the vision play yeah. here by Cerberus, trying to deward some of those to clear them from the river. And it really shows how why servers have been doing so well in the pro gaming series. They're very coordinated when it comes to the very small things. They have a very systematic approach when it comes to the early game. And their formula is really working. I mean, while they may be behind in CS, they have oh. so, man. Nice frame. Woo. Yeah, Zensho going down to half health there. Had to use a spell shield to escape. So now, meanwhile, we have... We do see Trevor, though. He's starting to... Peter into the mid lane. Yeah, Trevor will get spotted out by the vision from those minions. There are a lot of pings going down to Noel, so they do know that Noel isn't that river, and Trevor wants to go on this. Yeah, and Noel as well is quite ready. We have gold card onto Trevor, but that misses because Rappel denies it. And now, oh, wow. ooh, knocking nice Shadow play. back into his teammates. He has had to use Monsoon, but goes down. With a kill, of course, going to Noel instead. Now, two people from Ineski are getting really low. Noel will fall, and now they're gunning run after Yume here. Yooks, of course, right in front. And yeah, no, no one else will die so, for now. That is a one for one. Yeah, the support, and, for the support, however, Cerberus does come out on top. They were able yeah. to get the health advantage from that fight, and that will be the first dragon of the game going yes. to Cerberus. The mountain drink will be very nice for this um, Barris as he has pretty good poke, but Hamez is looking to steal oh, it. Oh, he comes do? He in does. and he does! And that <laughs> slick right Really there. nice play from Hamez, and if yeah. you take a look at the camera, like a while ago, you saw that face. Uh -huh. He had no expression, just really cold <laughs> face there. The face of a Very dragon focused. stealer. Yeah. <laughs> the face of a dragon stealer. And all members look extremely focused right now. I mean, there's a lot on the line. A lot of their pride is on the line as well. As those yeah. players, they don't want to lose to each other. Like, I mean, you come from a zero to week. You do, of course, you do not want to face more yeah. losses in the I mean, coming weeks. We see Noel and Especially Shadow on the team like right Nesky. now. Yeah. And let's say you're able to beat Cerberus, if is able to beat Cerberus, that might be the momentum and the hype that you just really push through with the rest of the split. Yeah. So, the two junglers will spot each other out. So Trevor decides to back off a little bit. Noel here with some backup for his jungler. But no one will die just yet. I know, he's got a pretty high KDA. 5.7 KDA really goes to show how well he is at is keeping himself alive and keeping the rest of his team alive.
He did, however, fall in that earlier team fight, but that was due to a pretty nice play coming from Noel, the flash headbutt, pushing him into, that team, into yeah. his team, rather. And so far, if we do see, we see the vision control somewhat maintained by, Mineski, by Cerberus. By, and yeah. Deep Wards improved by Yeah, Mineski. I mean, Mineski is doing a pretty good job. I think those wards came after the dragon. Yeah. So they're trying to look to control a sector of the map and use that knowledge from the sector that they've controlled to make the rest of the plays. And we haven't really seen that many plays coming in from Yuma yet. He uh -huh. hasn't you've been using his destiny that effectively. We haven't seen that many tower dives. And yeah. I'm not really sure Swain is the best character to tower dive as he's just, he has ridiculous sustain <laughs> and he can kill you under turret if you're not careful. So I guess that's kind of why we haven't really seen that. Meanwhile, bot lane is also pretty hard to tank as Janna has extreme peel as well. And not to mention that disengage. And now, but hold on. It looks like Mineski will go in for Baldi Gang here in the bot lane. Of course, a tower dive and stun onto Marky Land right. with four people there. Of course, you're going to get a kill. And right when we were talking about tower dives and how bot lane might not be the best, Mineski just, proves us wrong and shows exactly. us how it's done. Gets the easy tower dive. That was a five man tower dive. A four man tower dive. With onto that bot lane. on the side. Yeah, and I mean, Shadow wasn't even there to peel. They timed it very perfectly, getting Marky extremely easy. I bet they're like, what? What are you saying? Yeah. What? What? I'm not even sure they can hear me, but <laughs> maybe they can sense it. <laughs> okay, and now Zentro will start to chunk down that bot turret. Yeah, and this <laughs> turret will be looking to fall pretty quickly. I mean, there's not really that many people to defend. Yukes was able to do a decent amount of damage in that top lane as well. And oh, again, and here with a place, Noel in the mid lane here. Chop can barely move and he just falls. But this time, Noel gets another kill credit. So, no, no, I'm I mean, Noel's Alistar has been really impressive so far in this game. He's very blessed. A lot of flashy plays. I mean, it's paying off. I mean, I'd rather have a kill on the team than potentially dying because uh, you're trying to give the kill to your to, carry yeah, possibly. Yeah, that's true. That's true. They were it's not carry. ideal as, I mean, the 600 gold from these two kills could have gone to someone who needed it more. However, they were able to create uh, pressure in the mid lane. They were able to get that turret. Yep. So in the end, it somewhat pays off for this team. And a nice steal coming in from Hamiz, sealing away that blue buff. Yes. Whew. We have some insane plays again with the no with Noel showing how strong he is on that Alistar. The top lane turret for Mineski is getting low. Yeah, actually. Yeah, it looks like Cerberus will be able to take this turret away. That does put them still behind in gold. Mineski with that 1,000 gold lead so far. And a lot of that gold, like we said, let's take a look real quick. 3,700 to the 3,000 on Janna. So, like we said, it's all on Noel and he has picked up the upgraded sight stone, so that will help him out quite a bit in establishing vision control. That extra ward is extremely useful, actually, which is why a lot of players have tended to shift from the face of the mountain towards yes. this item. As and now Mineski is laying down some vision because they know Dragon will be up in a minute and 30, and they've started paying for it. Yeah, and the turret is gone in that bot lane. The big lane turret has also fallen, so the conditions for Dragon are really ideal for Mineski, and I wouldn't and this should be pretty good for them to take. I don't see them losing this dragon fight unless something terrible happens. <laughs> and I might just jinx it, who knows? <laughs> unless something terrible happens and then they just go, what? What, me? What? Yeah. We did something terrible. What'd you say? I wouldn't be surprised, but we do see um, Chalk is looking to build that Yomu's ghost plate so far. Yeah. We do see Lucian does have his already, so that's a decent amount of damage coming in from the server side. So they might be able to contest this. Dragon and TG you know, looking to push this. They're pressuring this top lane turret. And that should fall really fast. Yeah, That's uh, Lich Bane with the face and that Lulu. Yeah, so they are going to be pressuring this wave in the top lane. Though Polymorph does land onto Trevor. And now Yume with the gold card just casually, casually goes in for that kill. But Rappel denies them this. No, no, well but said. No. behind Noel. <laughs> Bloodthirsty Alistar right there. Three kills already in the bag, and now they're just bullying Yooks here. He tries his best to fly out of here, but no, looks like he might die. But Lab's respite there, very nice coming in from Hamez. 
knowing that a lot of pain has come down, but wow. Shock comes right back in for a double kill. And that was extreme display of <laughs> mechanics from both sides. Yeah. The last dress wipe was so clutch from yeah, Mavis right really there. Yeah, it really was. So good. One more second, and both of them would have died. However, Chalk was there to finish it up, but again, a very good attempt coming in from Hamez. And this is what I was talking about, about Mineski just collapsing onto members yeah. immediately in that top lane, in that bot lane. We saw it right there where Noel came out of nowhere. I, I, I didn't see him. I thought he was at the bottom <laughs> side of the map. I mean, here, let's check it out. He's about to die, then Hamez. Whoa. Really clutch. That E was about to land, however, so he beautiful. manages to block it. And they do kill Yux, however, Chalk. He's Just not going to let right them go in. away. Yeah, with that and arrow. Really and nice timing. Ooh, there! Beautiful! Double kill. And 5-5, five, five, <laughs> 1,000 gold in favor of Maneski. So it doesn't seem like neither team is faced with each other's plays just yet. I mean, if you have that ballsy Alistar coming in from behind, just securing the kill, and Chalk getting double kills, neither team is going to back yeah. off from this and next objective. And I mean, objective. with that, Cerberus have established a foothold for them to take this dragon. So Nessie is looking to test. Well taken down very low. This oh. way hurts a lot. Ugh. And that and should be now, the dragon yeah, for Cerberus. And that's a pretty big dragon. The Ocean Drake is probably the best Drake so far right now. And Chalk goes in. Oh, yes. Ultimate use onto Yumei there. He tries his best to run away, but Culling is going to be popped. Chalk Jeez. does get the kill off of Yumei. He, the guy is now 5-1-0 after that double kill. And now this. And they get the Ocean Drake. So yeah, I mean, that's going to pay off extremely well. They have the Earth Drake. They have the Ocean Drake. No, they actually, have a Mountain Drake went to... Oh, Mercy. that's right. That's unfortunate. Because <laughs> if they did have that Mountain Drake, that would have complemented oh! very well with that Ocean Drake they have. And it would have complemented really well with that 5-1. Yeah. That's true. So, but then they also get to take this mid turret. Yeah, now the gold lead is still in favor of Mineski though. Still roughly a thousand. So they have been doing a pretty good job of CSing up and uh, negating that advantage coming into the turrets and the objectives. Ooh, and I don't think anyone is going to be able to pick up this Rift Herald anymore. It is already 19 minutes in Yeah, that's going to disappear clock. soon. Yeah. And it wouldn't really benefit uh, any of the players on the team. Like, might it might help with Lulu, it might help with Swain, but it's not that much of a priority because Rift Herald is a really big investment. You have yeah. to put so many resources and so much of your time in securing that Rift Herald. So you really want to take it when there's an ideal opportunity yeah. or when your top laner or jungler would benefit greatly from it. And if it's not that big of a priority, then don't take it. And a lot of the time, a lot of these teams, they overcommit on taking the Rift Herald when they don't need it. And they end up just getting punished and losing a lot of stuff as a result. Yeah. So, but these teams, they're pretty smart. They're veterans. They know what's up. <laughs> and, and now, just to prove your point, Trevor is going here. Trying to attempt something. It looks like they will also smartly back away. Yeah. So Trevor and Tama is doing a pretty good job of setting the tempo of this game so far. Easy. Whoa! <laughs> like, that just tickled Yuke's. I mean, Yuke's is already really healthy. I know, healthy. I was like, wow, what a, what a ballsy Lulu there. Yeah, that's the power of this Swain right now. Once he picks up that spear, he saw it, he's going to be insane with that sustain. And red buff is up, so that will help fight a bit with the Siege. Maybe Mineski is looking to start sieging up. They, I feel like mm. they're just waiting on the Black Cleaver for Marquee before they start going all in in these team fights and trades. So neither jungler really trying, uh, really getting a hold of the opposite team's jungle so far. Both teams at quite the standstill here. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of defensive wards coming in from both sides. The pink wards being used to just deny vision from their own side rather than establish vision. And Ahmed is actually placing an aggressive pink ward, so negating everything that I just said within the past <laughs> 15 seconds. <laughs> And oh, and Destiny spun out. will be used there. Where will he go? Right, he's coming in for a flank there. And yes, last rest by will go down. And now Yume pops the Zonyas to stay alive. But Ham is already down. Yume is going down. And now Cerberus is just collapsing onto Mineski there. Wild Growth has been used onto TG to try and stay alive. But they will both be forced away with three members out of Mineski. And now Cerberus will rotate for this 
spirit. And that was a very clean scene by coming in from service. They played their roles perfectly. That was a really great monsoon from Shadow. Pushing him out, pushing Thomas out of his ultimate, just denying the ultimate from solid time and letting him SD collapse. Meanwhile, we saw Chalk have insane zoning with his ultimate and with that EQ. And right now, he's doing the same. He's zoning this TG right now. Will TG oh. call the Chalk? Chalk's actually getting down really low, but Shadow will no. be there to heal him up. <laughs> I'd rather True support. Get this kill but than Trevor let you actually die. dies to the Baron. <laughs> As some miscommunication goes down and a teleport coming from Yume trying to look kill Chalk oh! and gets dinked by the wild card, but it's not enough. Yeah, looks like that'll be it for them. Trevor already goes down, but at the very least they got Baron. So I guess they're trying to have it. Yeah, I mean Baron on four members of your team is really nice right there. And they got the ten kills and the eight, so Cerberus definitely in the driver's seat right now for this game. And let's see what they decide to do with this. They do have a decent amount of vision set up on that top side of the map. Yeah. Swain is in a position where he can just continuously push a wave up as he's extremely tanky and he's got a decent amount of wave clear so far. We do see that the banner of command has been popped as well. So Cerberus going all in right now. They have that black cleaver onto Marky as well. So really yeah. huge power spike from Cerberus. I wouldn't be surprised if they managed to take an inhibitor possibly a Nexus turret with this push right now. Yeah, well, given all of their weapons and resources right now, they actually could close down this game within the next few objectives. Yeah, for sure. Given Unless that they Mineski. get a really good team yeah. fight. But Mineski, they don't go down with the fight. They're known <laughs> to make those late game comebacks, and we might see one right now. Who knows? Yep. I mean, they do have the tools possible. If they're able to get those nice picks with the Twisted Faith, they could potentially come and back into this those game. really good wild growths. Because so far, it's only been used defensively onto TG. Yeah. To stay alive. We haven't yet seen it in action. A good team fight to turn the tide in their favor. So we do see a slow push being built up in the top lane. Banner of Command was using that mid and a five-man rotation and towards the bottom. Yeah, so this turret this will turn. fall. They don't have that Earth Strike, unfortunately. And here comes Destiny. Will he get a pick onto someone? No, we will not. Just using it to scout out <laughs> But five members are here, and James will go, might go down, but he uses Lamp Respite to stay alive. That is one ultimate down before that team fight. Now, Noel stuck here in the front of his turret. He will go down as well to Marky. He takes the kill, and now they're going in really hard. Shadow uses Monsoon to keep his team alive. They will take down this inhibitor turret from the bot lane and just keep marching in. It looks like. Cerberus is really going in hard and will try their best to take to close this game quite early. Yeah, so they have taken that inhibitor. 24 minutes in, Ocean Drake is up and they've got a decent mini wave pushing in the top lane and pushing in that mid lane. So they will they will go for this mid lane. They have that Ocean Drake to heal them up. So every uh, 16 seconds, I believe, they get healed up by 10%. Yeah, so that's so going to help quite a bit with this true. Siege. Instead of going for the next trade, they will instead try to weaken the defenses of Mineski yeah. some more with this next turret. And this Baron is expiring very shortly, so they want to make the most out of it. They could possibly rotate top as well into a few three and it is indeed going to be that case as they're all making their way towards that top Yeah, lane. because why not? There's a minion wave pushing yeah. into it right now, so let's just further down and seal the deal. So they will, looks like they will get this free as well. So, so that was like, what, four turrets? Yeah, four turrets. And the gold lead is now 6,000 in favor of Cerberus. <laughs> Five minutes ago, it was only 2,000. They made a count right there. And they're looking for more. And it's hard for Mineski to do anything right now. Like, even if they get that really nice engage with Noel and followed up by Team, they wouldn't have the follow up damage. Top has guessed the So a cheeky play right there. But it oh. might not be enough. Oh, but wait a minute, ladies and gentlemen, open your climbs because right now the coat is staring you in the face. Make sure your fingers are fast enough. And again, let us remind you that once you put in that coat and you get the prize, you will only get the Udyr Champion 4 now. But the rest of the skins, the skins that, you know, are what you're really in for will be inserted. So a little bit of patience and, you know, no one died because they wanted to give you a chance to input that code. So thank you. Thank you, CRB and Nessie. Cerberus <laughs> looking out for the viewers right there, making sure that not only do they get the skins, I believe it's a Cerberus bundle. Is it Trevor's bundle right now? I believe it's Trevor's bundle. So yeah, Trevor just looking out for the team instead uh, yeah, of going all in. Yeah. 
He decided to back off, <laughs> let the uh, viewers type in the code, so then <laughs> get back into the action and not miss a thing. I swear, I, I, I really think they're listening to us. So far, it's been quite on point. The synergy is there. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe they have that sixth sense, the challenger hidden senses. <laughs> All right, so sense coming in. after open up, opening up two gaps into the base of Mineski, now CRB is cleaning up their own jungle and you know, taking whatever they can so far, knowing that their minion waves are in really good positions. Yeah, I mean, that bottom inhibitor is down. The top lane inhibitor is exposed. And we do see Baron up in two minutes. So, Cerberus, they're free to do what they want. They've got their items. They've got a pretty decent gold advantage. And unless they Ooh. make a really big throw with a really poor <laughs> pick, then they're in a good spot to win this game. Yeah, given that there is still that 6k gold lead, Quite painful. Yeah, it's gonna be really difficult. I mean, there's so much poke and so much sustain coming in from the server side that yeah. there's not much we can do. Oh, we have here a teleport coming in. So Yook is going to join this fight. Will it be a... No, it will not. They will just try and clear this wave. Yeah, and we just see Noel. He's really looking to just get a pick right now. <laughs> That's what they yeah. need, however. Can't get that pick as there's just so much zone control coming from the server side. And, the, on oh, the hunt gets and they're on to Yooks right now. Polymar gets used and he will use Zanyas to stay alive. Culling will be popped to keep them from finishing him off, but he has been pushed aside. But right now, Lamb's rest right there. Very clutch again. Once again, coming in from Mineski. And now Yooks is falling down to Zentro with Marky on a rampage, taking out Noel. And that will be a 1 for 1 so far, but. An inhibitor for CRB, so they get the advantage off of that fight. Yeah. And if that Rams respite didn't go down, that could have been the game as yeah, all four members were true. extremely low right there. That However, they were barely kept alive with that Lamb's respite and were able to just walk away safely yes. with the well being I agree. sacrifice. Hamas shows how good he really is on that Kindred. Yeah, I mean, he's insane, insanely mechanically gifted player. He's been playing mid lane for a really long time. I mean, He's the mid he was the mid laner of SLU in the LCL, oh. where a lot of the time he just single-handedly carry the team, <laughs> like going 20-0 on Ezreal mid or something yeah. like that. And he's showing it again with this mechanics on this Kindred right now. But is it enough for him? Is it enough to win the game? Looks like it is not yet enough because we are looking at still a really big gold advantage for the side of Cerberus. And they have control of this Baron. The lanes are not pushed as far. So I guess Mineski, this is the time that Mineski actually has a window to try and contest this objective. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what Mineski is going to do right now. It looks like Cerberus trying to do their best to bait this Baron. They could possibly start it as two members are looking to recall. Destiny <laughs> was popped to scout out the Baron attempt. <laughs> Uh, can't blame yeah. T can't blame Yumi right there. As they, they don't want to take it. Yeah, they don't have any issues up here. Trevor needs to be careful. Yep, because they know that whatever misplay they might make in the next few fights will cost them the game. This Baron is going down really fast. I don't think Nesky will be able to spot in time. Actually, they are already here. Oh, and will the Baron is still at half. Now Mineski goes Noel. in right in the middle of them all. Now Yook is trying to zone the enemy carries. Lamb's rest by Hughes on just Thomas there. Culling has been popped as well. Noel isolated from the rest of his team. No one from the side of Stair Bears has Wait a minute, because Yooks just went down as I was trying to say that they were surviving really well. But now a minion wave is pushing into the Nexus turret of Mineski, so both teams will have to abandon this fight, as well as that attempt on Baron, but Dragon will be up in the next minute or so. And that was a really nice attempt from the I believe that was like a format knockup. However, there was no follow-up there to help him out. And Yooks, <laughs> very interesting play with that flash uh, yeah. root right there. I was trying to get that in the ground. Um, Never move, I believe is what the W is called, onto the... I, I think he was kind of stuck in the decision. Like, do I go for Yume or do I go for Zensho? Yeah. And instead, he ended up putting it in between them. Yeah. Not anyone, anyone at all. And not to mention that his teammates weren't in the best position as well to follow up. Yeah, for sure. And as a result, one for one, that trade was a bit in favor of Neski as they did stop that Baron and they did get yep. that kill onto Yuke's. 
This dragon, however, is up very shortly, and Mineski with those two drakes, meanwhile, Cerberus is sitting on one, and that will be the air dragon, so not the most important drake to secure. However, if you can secure it, then it is quite nice as that 15 is, it adds up. Yep, so now a more faster rotations on the side of Cerberus, given that what they are trying to do is now pressure Mineski on all fronts. Yeah, and so far, Mineski is doing a pretty good job of holding on. These clutch and respites have been very crucial to them yeah. still being in the game. And some pretty interesting plays coming in from the Cerberus members as well. 4,000 gold is the lead for Cerberus as they look for the spinning inhibitor. I agree. And now what they're trying to do is slowly choke out Mineski, making sure that all their defenses will be totally obliterated. But Mineski, again, doing a good job of holding out as for as long as they can. Yeah, they're just really waiting for that opportunity. I mean, Noelle's been getting a lot of nice combos. It's just that yeah. there's really not enough follow-up. If they're able to get that combo with the follow-up they need, then they could possibly still stand a chance so far. And if Destiny is actually used aggressively this time, not so much just to spot out Cerberus. Oh, but Trevor there! Oh, almost caught in an awkward position. Yeah, so it looks like Neski are gonna clear those waves while Cerberus makes the rotation for that bottom lane. As Kings are going down, they see two members of Neski in that top lane, so they're just rushing as fast as they can to take yeah. this inhibitor down. And you have a bannered up minion as well. <laughs> yeah. 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 Looks right there in front, trying to keep Hamas off of their the team. Noel again coming in from behind there, trying to make the plays, but Yuk just goes down in front, isolated from the rest of his team. Lamb's rest fight on Hamas quite a bit early. Now sending away though, their Barris as one of their members has fallen. It and looks like again, yeah. Yuk's going in a bit too aggressive right there. No follow up from the rest of the team once again. And I believe the execution is calling coming in from Hanez is really just doing work, really shutting down Yuk from yeah. being that tanky frontline that he needs to be as. That cuts your healing by quite a bit. I and it's a 50% healing reduction. And considering how often or how you should already come to expect Noel's plays, he always, always circles around yeah, for I his team. But for some reason, their bears keep getting caught off guard. Yeah, they're not doing a good job of warding the other entrances. And it looks like Nessie going for this very risky play, trying to get that bear. However, they are oh, taking down very low, and yes. something might happen. But Cocoon doesn't connect. However, they have been chunked down, so maybe this is the play where Yuki's over aggressiveness will materialize into a good team fight. Ultimate lands onto TG there, uses wild growth to try and survive. Marky is hot on his heels, uses glitter lands to slow them down. They will settle for this wolf camp instead and maybe, maybe get the Baron that Mineski tried to take away from them. And again, no one dies from this Mineski side right now. <laughs> and no one dies from this Mineski side. Destiny is being used, so they do know that Cerberus is taking this Baron. Baron down to the end. Cerberus will be forced to back away as they did spot out the teleport from yeah. TG. Now right. back to this game of footsie once again <laughs> for both teams. Alright, this is going to be a really, really slow back and forth. And Eski, of course, don't want to risk any of their lives because they know how grave the consequences would be if they do. And so far, though, they have been very patient. Yeah, I mean, Mineski, this is, their, this is what they're known for. They're known for playing very patiently in this mid game and in this late game and just capitalizing on the mistakes of the enemy team to make a comeback and win it in the late game. And they're looking to do that right now, but let's see if Cerberus will allow them to do so. And right now, both teams just trying to make the waves yeah. in their favor as they clear these waves out. Farm some CS. Speaking of CS, we do see that Zencho has been quite busy in this bottom <laughs> lane, farming up quite a storm. That's 375 true. CS, 36 minutes in. Meanwhile, Yuke's, his CS is actually relatively low. He's almost the same CS as Ham is right now, so he hasn't really been able to farm up. He has been cruising up quite a bit with his team, and... And he doesn't have that level 16 ultimate yet, which yeah. might be quite a difference. Though Mineski has been doing well, catching up, um, closing up this gold lead. They are now at just 
short of 2,000. Yeah, and that's mainly from the farming. While they were able to take these uh, early inhibitors down, Cerberus, it did result in a lot of farm for Mineski to just farm up. They weren't able to capitalize on the waves pushing towards the Mineski side. And as a result, Mineski turtling up, gets that CS, and now they're in the game. They're in contention to win the game. And in a minute, though, Elder Drake will be spawning. It is now 36, 37 minutes in this game one between Mineski and Cerberus oh. for the Pro Gaming Series Summer Split 2016. Guys, who do you think is going to take away this game in the next few minutes? Will it be MSKI Mineski win or a CRB win? Yeah. Go fight in the chat. No, just have a healthy and discussion. I really like this play coming from Mineski. They really built up huge waves in this top and bottom lane and yeah. Cerberus failed to respond to the waves being built up and now Mineski has pretty good control over there. They could probably force a play. They were able to take the bottom turret as a result of that play right there. So Mineski really smart Whoa. with their late game decisions in this macro rotation, in these macro rotations. Yeah, that's true. And now that the lane pressure is in their favor, they are going to bait out Cerberus here. Elder Dragon is up in Two seconds. However, both teams still hovering over this Baron, as this Baron is what really allows these teams to go for that final push and end the game, or possibly for Mineski's case, break the yes. defense and finally push for themselves. And they haven't responded to the waves in that top and bottom, and that's really bad for Cerberus, as that's a lot of CS and that's a lot of pressure. This bottom lane turret could possibly fall as a result. I feel like they're just going to... And here comes the teleport by Yume. Yeah. Really sneaky play coming in. And they're going to be able to take this turret for sure and possibly inhibitor. Cerberus needs to respond. Oh, wow. They're not responding. They're yeah. still in this top lane. And that inhibitor they're, should They're fall. still running away because Mineski is trying to stop the port. And now Yume is just comfortably taking down this inhibitor. And he does. And he's looking to end the game as the rest of the team and just <laughs> distracts them. But Yume might be able to go back and join his team with Destiny. Decides not to. Yume's there being the only person to defend. And now both teams are teetering for this Baron. Culling will be pop. Who will fall down first? Will it be Mineski or will it be Cerberus? Now Marky is on the heels of Noel there. And, you may still be <laughs> and now Noel on the chop tosses him into his team. And Monsoon will be used to try and keep Mineski away. Who will die first? Lamb's Respite has been used. They try and stay within its protection there. No one has died just yet. Mineski, uh, Noel though, almost, almost, almost by just a sliver of health survives and now a minion wave is pushing into the nexus turret and of Cerberus. That's another team fight where nobody dies once <laughs> again for this game. If you take a look at the turrets real quick, you see that not too much damage has been done in the top lane despite this minion wave being there for so long. And a really questionable rotation coming from Cerberus. I feel like their shot calling slipped quite a yeah. bit during that period of time and as a result, they lost a lot of pressure. They, the gold lead is only down to 1,000 gold. Yeah. They now have to respond to this bot lane with the super minions. And Dragon is still up. Baron is still up, rather. So this is really bad as that bottom lane. And now they're both keep on marching pushing. back yeah. <laughs> into Baron. Another game of looking for this Baron pit and dance <laughs> for this Baron, which might result again in no one dying. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, so we do have one inhibitor down on the side of Cerberus. That be, um, a vulnerable spot for them. And both teams just trying to regain control of the map. Lay down some wards on those objectives. Take out the wards from the enemy team. And Yux though, Yux does have his teleport, so he's fine. Yeah, he did have it earlier, so they that resulted in Cerberus making some questionable decisions when it came to responding to the minion wave. However, with this teleport up, they should be able to push these waves a lot more better and a lot more confidently, knowing that they can respond to the Baron if Mineski decides to go for this. Yeah. And it kind of feels like Mineski is the one who's who are in the lead right now, really That's creating true. the pressure. So far. And a while ago, it was Cerberus almost winning the game. However, Mineski coming back, and I feel like that's. Mainly due to the very clutch plays from Hamez keeping his team alive yeah. while the rest of the team doesn't die. Yeah, based on the body language, you can see that Cerberus is starting to just um, be very shaky in trying to pull off those team fights. They do teeter around 
quite a lot. And Vineski is going to try and wait for them. Yeah, they're just trying to deny vision and trying to establish vision for themselves. There is a boy stack. Vineski is to this. How fast is he going down? It's already down to half Whoa, HP. Whoa, and the Shadow is not so much here. Damage and Vineski won't be able to... <laughs> Neski takes the Baron and Cerberus won't be able to respond and on the oh, hunt. Oh, on the hunt is going to be used and Yook's right there in the middle. Pops an early Zonya as now Hamez is going to try and take someone down but pops his Lab's respite there to stay alive. Now Noel is, has three people knocked up there. Zencho coming in for some extra damage but now CRP is retaliating. They are coming in for some kills. Marky, will he be able to get TG? Trevor flashes wow. in to try and go for Yume, but Cocoon does not connect. And now they've spotted out Thomas. Will he be able to stay alive? He does flash out to create some distance. There is a minion wave. And because of that, opening up there in the bot lane of Cerberus, TG is going to teleport to that and try to push it in. And again. Neski and Cerberus turning the fight completely on its head, but we do oh. see TG. And he's going to the back door, gets to the Nexus turret, and he's gonna fall. No, he doesn't die just yet. <laughs> he manages to live despite going for that play. And I feel like Cerberus is very tilted right now. I, I know I would be tilted if I had to deal with that split push coming in from both these teams. I mean... What? is happening so far. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Cerber is getting really confused because now Mineski is pulling some crazy, crazy, crazy moves here. Although in that fight, they did manage to retaliate. Did not expect that TG would actually <laughs> just teleport onto that Nexus. And I feel like if they weren't able to defend it on time, that destiny that you may use would have been utilized to really close off that game. He would have just joined TG and be like, alright, let's just do it. Let's close the game. Yeah, and now the bottom inhibitor has spawned for Cerberus, so a lot of pressure has been relieved so far. So they will be able to contest this Elder Dragon a bit better right now. However, we just saw Maneski destroy Baron really fast, so yep. they might look to do the same. And Ping's going down on Dukes. They know Dukes is here, and he might get caught out. Oh, Hamid. Yes, Hamid does have him there in position, but Yooks cannot be underestimated as well. Noel pushes Marky aside, but now he's stuck in the middle. Four people calling will be used to chunk him down. He flashes out, manages to stay alive, as well as has the shield from TG, but Yume is just marching into the mid lane there. And now, they've also been spotted out. They're, they're just gonna abandon this. Yeah, I mean they have that they do have that double teleport available so they're just looking to create as much pressure as they can on the map you may of course does have his destiny alongside his teleport and looks like Cerberus is looking to take this dragon. however will it be fast enough or will Maneski be able to just easily respond to this and, and they're all here Tom is the steal again the dragon for the second time in this game See what happens. Maneski is laughing in on both sides and this elder dragon already half HP so far it does go down this is taking a while, so no, Thomas likes to steal it. Have, oh, but no, CRP secured this Elder Drake, and now it looks like Thomas will be the first to go down, and now Culling will be popped there. He manages to take out both TG and Yume from just that, and now Zancho for that triple kill, and Noel um, is just going to run away. 40 seconds on the clock. This might be the game so far. Pings are going down on these inhibitors. They do have a nice minion wave in that mid lane. And I feel like the crucial part of that team fight was the Elder Dragon buff. The true damage that Yeah, Pings and the was burn. That. Yeah, the burn is that true damage. And that did help quite a bit with that team fight. I feel like that's why servers were able to win that team fight so decisively. As a result, fire. they're just destroying. Yeah, literally on fire right now. <laughs> as they look to just destroy the base of Mineski. Mineski <laughs> is up in 20 time. seconds. Will, it be in, will they be in time to stop them or will, will Cerberus go for the end right now? Well, Cerberus seems to be taking their sweet time with this and instead... Yeah, I mean, three inhibitors down is pretty good. I'd take that yeah. any day. And now lots of pings well, going they down. They clear um, the wave as fast as Mineski does. It so. looks like a bit of these Cerberus members are quite tense as those were a lot of <laughs> aggressive pings. It looks like someone wasn't happy about someone calling the end of the game right there. And as a result, the service members I mean, looking like, to back no, away. No, back, back, back. Yeah. Don't overcommit. And let's drag this game out more. It's 46 minutes in. It is not enough, apparently. 
Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> you might be looking at another Baron and, and Elder exactly Dragon. let's see exactly what happened. The smite yeah. goes down. Trevor managed to cure it. Then we do see a nice collapse. Great monsoon from Shao just picking yeah. off Amez. He was the only one there to use that ultimate. Meanwhile, Yukes is there just being a, a nuisance. Actually <laughs> landing a two-man Zol. Zone and the calling did so much damage. Complimented with the true damage. And ultimate nice from Chop stops Zensho. Yeah. And see how painful that is. And I mean, Marky, once again, showing why he's probably one of the best AD carries, if not the best, in the PGS so far. His positioning has been impeccable so far, and he's only died once despite this <laughs> really long game. I mean, so Chalk has only died once as well. Both of these carries are doing a very good job of staying, of alive. staying alive. I mean, Shadow has only died once as well. Wow. So these guys, well, I guess it kind of goes with the rest of the game. I mean, no <laughs> one's really died so far this game. It's 47 minutes and the score is only 19-9. I mean, in the other games, we go to a Bronze 5 game. The game kill count will Bronze probably five. be... You're, you're comparing a Bronze 5 game to a no, PGS I'm just game. saying. <laughs> Alright, but it looks like Yux will be stunned by that gold card. But well. you know, CRP is going for a slow, slow death here. Yeah, there's not much that they can do right now. The on the hunt does get caught. He's tanking so much well. damage right now. It's good. Whoa! Oh, wow. But looks like this might turn into their favor, though. Noel going hard onto them. Yume as well flashes in aggressively, uses gold card, but Noel will go down really fast. And Yume decides to abandon that attempt. Now two people on the side of the Nexus have fallen. Will their Nexus follow as well? Looks like the answer is going to be yes. And that is a victory for game one going to Mineski against Cerberus. So there you have it, guys. One win in the bag for Mineski in the second matchup. Yeah, I mean... You had to drink to that. Yeah, the Bacchus <laughs> Energy drink. I mean, after that yes. game... I'm pumped. I've got a lot of yeah. energy in me. And that was a really <laughs> explosive game. I mean, we saw the mid game was consisted of just both of the teams surviving with yeah. barely a sliver HP. It looked like Cerberus was going really to win strong. the game from the start. Mineski came back and really well played from Mineski. I mean, they showed that they had that late game prowess and gave Cerberus a run for their money. Meanwhile, Cerberus, they still maintained their composure. Yep. Really great team fights. It all came down to that Elder Dragon. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, <laughs> Yume and TG did a really good job of backdooring. That's they true. They made it That's really true. tense. And Noel with those with those really yeah. smart plays from behind. And of course, Mineski, props to them for doing a good job of drawing out the fight and coming back in that game. It was just that Elder Dragon. Yeah, for sure. That Elder Dragon really changed it. And that's one of the new yes. things in the 6.9. Elder Dragon can make or break a game. A game. And, and it helps case, you close games down much easier. Yeah, for sure. And with that, one point will go to Cerberus as we do have one more game. Will Cerberus, Cerberus be able to secure that 3-0? Or will Mineski tied up with the 1-for-1? One one? Right, yes, I did make a mistake there. So there you have it. Congratulations for Cerberus. We will take a break and be right back for the next game between these two teams. So guys, stay frosty in your seats. And of course, it is. this has been Neep and Aika. And we'll be back for more esports fun. On to Yume here as well as Cocoon landing in the mid lane. And first blood goes to Chalk. The top lane, TG, looks like he's going to fall really fast. Uses Wild Growth to stay alive just a little bit longer. Though these two from CRP are not going to quit on him. And they get another kill that's two kills. So Isaac. And now, oh, wow. boom, knocking nice Shadow play. back into his teammates. He has had to use Monsoon, but goes down with a kill. Of course, going to Noel instead. Now, two people from Ineski are getting really low. Noel will fall. And now they're gunning run after Yume here. Yooks, of course, right in front. And here in the ball lane, of course, a power dive and stun onto Marky Land right. with four people there. Of course, you're going to get a kill. And right well, in the mid lane here, Chomp can barely move and he just falls. Yume with the gold card just casually, casually goes in for that kill. But Rappel denies them there. No, no, well but from no. behind, no, well, bloodthirsty Alistar right there. Three kills already in the back. And now they're just bullying Yooks here. Tries his best to fly out of here, but no, looks like he might die. But Lab's respite there, very nice coming in from Hamez, knowing that a lot of pain has come down. But wow. Shaw comes right back in for a 
double kill. Destiny will be used there. Where will he go? Right? He's coming in for a flank there. And he has last respite. Will go down. And now Yume pops the Zonya to stay alive. But Tom is already down. Yume is going down. And now Cerberus is just collapsing onto Mineski there. Wild Girl has been used onto TG to try and stay alive. But they will both be forced away with three members out of Mineski and now and James will go might go down but he uses last respite to stay alive that is one ultimate down before that team fight now Noel stuck here in the front of his turret he will go down as well to Marky he takes the kill and now they're going in really hard Shadow uses Monsoon to keep his team alive they will take down this inhibitor onto Yooks right now. Polybar gets used and he will use Zonyas to stay alive. Culling will be popped to keep them from finishing him off, but he has been pushed aside. But right now, Lamp's rest right there. Very clutch again. Once again, coming in from Mineski. And now Yooks is falling down to Zentro with Marky on a rampage, taking out Noel. And that will be a one for one so far, but an inhibitor for CRB, so they get the advantage. Now Mineski goes in right in the middle of them all. Now Yook is trying to zone the enemy carries. Lamb's rest by use on just Thomas there. Culling has been popped as well. Noel isolated from the rest of his team. No one from the side of Stair Bears has wait a minute because Yook just went down. Well, again, coming in from behind there, trying to make the plays, but Yook just goes down in front, isolated from the rest of his team. Lamb the rest fight on James quite a bit early. Now, sending away though, their Barris, as one of their members has going to be used, and Yook's right there in the middle, pops an early Zonya. Now, James is going to try and take someone down, but pops his Lamb the rest fight there to stay alive. Now, Noel is. Three people knocked up there. Zentro coming in for some extra damage, but now CRB is retaliating. They are coming in for some kills. Marky, will he be able to get TG? Trevor flashes wow. in to try and go for Yume, but Cocoon does not connect, and now they've spotted out Thomas. Will he be able to stay alive? He does flash out, create some. CRB secures this Elder Drake, and now it looks like Thomas will be the first to go down, and now Culling will be popped there. He manages to take out both TG and Yume from just that, and now Zencho for that triple kill. And yeah, so much damage right now. Whoa! Oh, wow, but it looks like this might turn into their favor, though. Noel going hard onto them. Yume as well flashes in aggressively, uses gold cards, but Noel will go down really fast. And Yume decides to abandon that attempt. Now, two people on the side of the next have fallen. Will their next follow as well? Looks like the answer is going to be yes, and that is a victory for game one going to Mineski against Cerberus. So, there you have it, guys. One win. Chris, have you seen these comments lately? Yep, I see him, Patrick. Yeah, it looks like a dog or something. No, you guys. They want us to do Ionian Girls. Oh, why didn't you just say so? Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it.